Hello, welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue, and I'm back up to speed tonight. And I want to start with a meme. A good laugh, thanks to Vivi the Duchess. We have a new level of crazy. Sausage Squad. This is Meghan on Air Force One before she even knew Prince Harry's name. She didn't need anyone to get inside Air Force One. She did that on her own. Maybe Bill Clinton was still president? I don't know. Show me royals who have this kind of photo. I mean, what the actual F is this? Uh, these people sniff paint thinner. I have no proof, but no doubts either. And in other sniffing jobs headlines, Spotify took 34 million hit on its podcasting in wake of Harry and Meghan split. Right down follows the loss of 200 jobs in the streaming platform's podcasting division. This is getting uglier by the minute. And speaking to investors, Daniel Eck, Spotify's chief executive, said the company was stepping out of some deals and relationships that haven't worked out and admitted that in some cases, we overpaid relative to what we should have done. Yeah, that absolutely sounds like he's talking about the Montecito morons. But we already knew Spotify had been markled. But what about this? The Daily App says Prince William would have to bankroll Prince Harry and Meghan if they return to UK. Earlier reports claim that the Duke of Sausages is desperate to come back to the UK following his move to the US three years ago. This was from a royal commentator Ephraim Hardcastle. William, as Prince of Wales, in receipt of 24 million a year from the Duchy of Cornwall, enjoys a surplus which will diminish as he eventually bankrolls the households of his children. But it would quickly disappear should Harry and Meghan return to the gilded cage. William would have to fund their duties housing costs and schooling of Archie and Lilibet. And headlines just keep getting crazier, like this one. Prince Harry expected to be welcomed back with open arms should he split from the methane. I, I, I mean, do you think this could actually happen? All forgiven, open arms and all that stuff? Uh, let me tell you, the fundamental problem behind this kind of headlines is that they imply that Meghan is the problem when she's only half the problem in this case because Harry will keep being the traitor Harry. There's no way around that. I, I am not going to place any bets on this, but receiving him with open arms in any situation would be foolish. And speaking of rejection, California Governor Gavin Newsom had to block Methane's number on his personal phone because she kept pestering him with her political ambitions. Can't you imagine? And this was revealed by Lady Colin Campbell talking about Meghan's political posh. Gavin Newsom has been harassed by Meghan to such an extent for her putting forward her idea that they should allow her to step into Senator Diane Feinstein's shoes, which would incidentally give her access to the Intelligence Committee because that goes along with the seat. And Diane Feinstein is a member of the Intelligence Committee. And he's got so fed up with her persistence that he has given instruction that her calls are not to be received and not to be passed on to him. And he has personally blocked her from his mobile phone. And we are talking about Diane Feinstein, who has been serving as senator since 1992. That must be the reason we got stuff like this. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle back report, which calls for media to show men cleaning and women fixing the sink to break the gender binary. Yes, they are, they are going there. And I don't want the royal road to get in politics and stuff, but if Meghan keeps pushing that agenda, I would have no choice. Either way, Meg. Why don't you go all the way and ask for women to have the right to work at oil rigs? I mean, there are zero women working as roughnecks, so it needs more representation. And in today's delusional takes, we got this from the Daily Fail. Former Vogue editor claims that Catherine doesn't have Camilla's joy. But before we delve into the article itself, I need to give you a trigger warning about the woman responsible of these remarks. And holy mother of God, 
Now, I know that as a gentleman, I should not criticize any woman's appearance, but this is especially difficult to me. I would not break that rule now, but I'm just going to say that this lady reminded me of Ace Ventura if Ace Ventura was cosplaying a Poundland pimp with an Ikea rug. Well, the Princess of Wales has been labeled a disappointment in her approach to jewelry by a former Vogue editor. Susie Menkes from Beaconsfield, Buckinghamshire, made this Catherine comment on the latest episode of her podcast, Creative Conversations. The prominent critic was awarded an OBE by the late Queen for her contribution to fashion journalism in 2014, invited British Vogue's jewelry editor Carol Wooton on the show where they discussed the Princess of Wales' recent outfits. The former Vogue International editor accused Kate of appearing indifferent to the collection of rare and precious jewels she is privileged to wear and said she doesn't seem as passionate about jewels as her mother-in-law, Camilla. She said, the Princess of Wales is a bit disappointment about a bit of a disappointment about jewelry. She gives the impression that she only puts it on when she absolutely has to. Well, I, I think everybody has the right to have an opinion. And I really didn't know about Mrs. Menke's trajectory. And as for me, my knowledge of jewelry is limited to symbols. So it's not much a fa fashion statement, but rather semiotic knowledge. So I would like to know, what do you think about this? And it also helps when you can compare or have a reference so you understand the scope of something. Just like uh, this tweet from Megan Small. Just for the sake of being petty, Trevor married Tracy Curland, who is worth approximately 300 million, while Harry is worth only 10 million, who got the last laugh. And I also spotted this tweet from According to Taz. No one can convince me that these two are not a barrel of laughs behind the scenes. They are so much fun at engagements like this, and the way they giggle with each other is so cute. They clearly love and laugh together. And yes, the laughs you will see in these pictures are authentic. And it's funny, because you always see mean comments under photos like this, criticizing anything about the king and the queen. And I say uh, funny because 50% say that they are faking happiness and the other 50% that yes, they are laughing at all the peasants that are paying for their lifestyle with their taxes. Uh, yeah, the anti-monarchists should make up their mind because you cannot have both things at the same time. Uh, by the way, I found this picture funny. It reminded me of the Markle Claw. So this would be the lion's paw. But by the way, I've been taking a look at King Charles and Queen Camilla's faces, and it's interesting uh, how they complement each other in terms of couple compatibility. So maybe I will talk about it in the following days. And these photos were taken at the annual Sandringham Flower Show, where King Charles came face to face with his royal pieness in one of the exhibitor's tents. Queen Camilla spotted the pie and exclaimed, it looks just like my husband, and call him over to have a look. I have to say, that's a very British sense of humor. My royal rogues, if you want to support my channel, all you have to do is hit the like and subscribe buttons. That's it. And remember, much love and bliss.